OpenSpeaks is, uh, is an open uh, toolkit for archivists that are documenting low resource languages for um, uh, low resource languages uh, in audio and video format. So that includes um, many people. That includes people who are uh, enthusiasts um, that are creating audio or video documentation of their own language or a language that is spoken uh, close to them. And um, it includes um, uh, journalists who are interviewing people and are recording and are broadcasting that uh, on different platforms, web or TV and so on. And the focus primarily has been always for open space, languages that are low resource languages. So that includes indigenous languages, endangered languages, and, um, and any language that is not supported by uh, a lot of funding from the government uh, and so on and so forth. So um, initially when OpenSpeaks um, uh, was created in 2017, um, it was created um, keeping in mind that people who are documenting languages might have some amount of understanding in, uh, of, of language documentation. And uh, they also know English to some extent. So um, the, the original OpenSpeaks project is actually a few thousand word um, 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 resource. And it's, it's a massive resource in that sense. But uh, when we start working on um, this particular uh, version, we realized that it might be quite overwhelming. So to test our assumptions, we actually interviewed a lot of people. And uh, one of them, who is a new um, archivist, told us that they are very overwhelmed when they landed on the page and they're trying to figure out where to start from. Um, and the, the idea behind this, uh, this project that we did under uh, the Unlock program is to uh, make sure that the archivists that are creating documentations, uh, audiovisual documentations, know how to publish their audio and video materials as accessible resources, that is accessible to people with disabilities. Um, or different challenges uh, with uh, with uh, accessibility. So, uh, so the the first thing that we did is we we had our own uh, notions of sorts, uh, but we tried to interview people and ask them what challenges that they face while documenting languages. So we interviewed people who are actively documenting different uh, low resource languages. Uh, we interviewed people who are working with uh, children um, while using. Uh, sign languages to teach children with disability. Uh, we talk, talk to people um, that are creating um, other kinds of uh, language resources, for example, dictionaries or, um, or dictionaries that are actually multimedia dictionaries, so that have audio and video materials included in the dictionary and so on and so forth. We also interviewed people from different places. So my colleague um, Leila uh, and I worked together on this project from the beginning. Unfortunately, Leila is not able to um, join us today. Um, but, but I think a lot of things that we um, sort of work together uh, are reflected here uh, in the new uh, version of this project. So, so this version of the project is primarily around accessibility. So the first three chapters that you see here are yet to be created and yet to be sort of linked here. They're then in uh, the development process. Um, so before I actually jump into the fourth chapter, which is about accessibility, um, let me also walk you through a little bit about the, the idea about this toolkit. Um, as I was saying, the toolkit is designed keeping in mind people who are documenting um, uh, low resource languages. Um, so, so not many people know about the proper process of recording. So some people might have done it uh, maybe a couple of times. Some people might not have done at all any kind of audiovisual recording. And the idea is to introduce to them uh, how it starts. Where do they start from? What, what they have to keep in mind? Do they need to carry extra batteries when they're going for um, a field documentation? Or if they are doing a documentation uh, because of COVID, they're not able to travel and they're doing the documentation online, how do they do that? Um, so that planning process is very critical, is very important, and what people have to uh, keep in mind. Um, the second um, chapter is about asking for consent or permission when they're actually recording, when they're actually documenting a language. So they might be documenting a language just by interviewing one person or two people, uh, but they might also be documenting, say, 
a group of people and how do they ask for permission? There might be children visible uh, in, in, in their documentation. So how do they take parental consent? Um, and, and those things are generally not known to all the people who are documenting languages, but they're very important uh, from a legal uh, point of view, but also from um, an ethical point of view. So um, the next chapter is about copyright and giving credits. I'll quickly also jump into the chat just to ensure that everybody is able to see. Okay. Um, the, the, the next chapter is about copyrights and giving credits. So if somebody is creating a documentation, uh, an audio or video, and they sh they're sharing that on social media, for example, how do they attribute people that have participated in the uh, documentation process? So what they have to uh, take into account and how do they do that? What license do they use? Um, do they use a free license? Do they use a proprietary license? Uh, and how does it work? So, so that chapter is all about that. And all these three chapters will be available soon. Um, the fourth chapter, which is um, about accessibility, is currently um, mostly developed, but uh, I think there will be a lot more to add to this as well. Um, so this chapter is about how do content creators, how do archivists share something that is accessible to all the people and not just people who have uh, who are able uh, but also people who have some form of disability so the two uh, sort of uh, sub chapters that are included in this are um, uh, what kind of solutions they have to build uh, when they are creating um, audiovisual documentation um, and one part is uh, how do they make sure that people with hearing impairment um, people who are deaf or people who have some uh, level of difficulty in uh, with, with hearing, how do they access the content that they are creating? So um, and the, the design is such that there is a collapsible, um, this is a collapsible button. So um, the feedback that we received early on is that the current version of OpenSpeaks is quite uh, long and it's difficult to understand, difficult to comprehend. So we try to change, incorporate that feedback into our design. So right now, somebody who is landing on this page will see this much, which is not so much text. There is definitely some text, but it's not so much text. Uh, and when they click on a particular uh, segment, they will be able to see more details. But then if they have to go further into a particular segment, for instance, um, this particular uh, aspect um, that we see here is about um, something called closed captioning. So something that you see on YouTube, for example, when you enable the um, the CC um, button that is um, that is there at the bottom part of YouTube, bottom right part of YouTube. Um, so uh, what happens is when somebody is creating a subtitle, they can create in two different ways. One is they create um, the video and they sort of embed uh, the uh, the captions, the subtitles over the video file. So it's just one video file. The other way to do it is they create a video and create a separate text file and then they uh, sort of add time code to the text so when the text and the video are played together the text appears over the video so that two different layers so if somebody wants to change um, uh, or make some corrections or make a translation of the original text they will be able to easily do that um, so how do they do that and this part is also uh, created so when they click on um, you know that that aspect um that particular segment about closed captioning they will be able to see um they'll be able to land in this page um and they will be able to go back to the uh, open captioning so which is basically burned in caption that i was talking about when the um the captioning is basically embedded over the um video now there are different ways to uh, do closed captioning so how do they do that um and there are different um devices that people are using some somebody is using a phone somebody is using a computer uh, and in this example um, this is about uh, uh, an open source platform called amara and amara is very useful because um, it is not only an open source platform or a web uh, platform it's really powerful in terms of creating a community around translation of subtitles so if i'm translating a particular video and i'm creating a translation in a particular language, I can invite people that speak different languages and they can translate into their languages. So this opens up 
um, sort of a, you know, um, a, a whole different world of translating content into different languages and making sure that people that speak those languages are able to access content in a different language because they're basically seeing the subtitles. So it's not just for people that have um, disability, but also for people that don't know a, a language that is spoken in a particular video. And, and this is how we share knowledge. This is how we ensure that everybody has um, access to content, access to information. Um, so that's about Amara. Now, going back, um, when we uh, look at the um, challenges that people face when they have visual uh, impairment and what is required for them. So in both the cases, what we have focused a lot on is what most archivists might not know. So they might not know what challenges people with uh, hearing impairment or visual impairment might be facing. So we introduce a little bit about the challenges that people face and how do they access the web. So for instance, when somebody has visual impairment, they're not using their mouse at all in most cases. They're using their keyboard and the tab um, button on their keyboard to go to different segments um, of, a, uh, of, a, of any content. So when it comes, uh, when it's, uh, say for instance, a blog that has an embedded audio or video, um, that blog content has to be formatted in a particular way. So they have to have um, things like um, headers. Uh, and headers help a lot uh, when somebody is accessing, um, you know, uh, that blog or that website using their keyboard only. So they can basically use their tab button and then scroll through. So when somebody is adding a video, embedding a video into that, they should also add a little bit of text content so that um, the person who is accessing that content is able to um, listen to uh, the the text content. So that's very important. So it's not just uh, adding subtitles, but it, it's also making sure that there are different ways to access the content. Um, and in most people that are recording audio in uh, in you know outdoor uh, places, and they might capture a lot of background noise, or they might capture um, noise that is unintended, uh, and they need to clean that audio before uploading. So how do they do that? Um, so there's a tutorial to teach that. Um, so when they basically uh, click here. We're not sharing too much information in the very uh, first page, in the landing page, but we're taking them into um, separate uh, pages. And each of those pages are kind of independent. They're not, um, they're related with each other, but they're very independent. So if somebody is looking for information only about uh, editing voice, they will be able to go through this particular tutorial, which is available both, both as text and as video. And they will be able to, um, um, install the software and make those changes. Um, they can keep this tab open while doing that. Uh, they could do all of that. If somebody wants to contribute to the project, they could also, uh, and we'll, we'll basically ensure that all these, uh, all these videos are available as um, videos without audio. So somebody who is interested to create a separate audio file, they could basically do that and create uh, another video file. So this video, this tutorial is also available in their own language. So anybody who is, um, who is trying to um, say watch and learn uh, and they don't know English well, they would be able to do that as well. So that's also creating a community around uh, this, uh, this practice. Um, so, so that's where we are right now. Um, we have uh, basically a landing page and all these links will be available soon.